I'm Curtis Ballard. I'm a distinguished technologist with Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and I'm an NVM Express board member. Uh, today, we'll be discussing the remote direct memory access, commonly called RDMA transport, uh, and the new NVM Express over RDMA transport specification, which we uh, refactored and released as part of the NVMe 2.0 specifications release bundle. As an overview, RDMA, remote direct memory access, is a network communication technology that has been enabled over a network transport. Uh, in RDMA communications, the communication is done by enabling direct memory access from a remote location to another location. Uh, RDMA effectively performs reads and writes directly to distant memory, in our case, over a network protocol. Uh, it specifies setting up a buffer on one side of the connection, for example, an NVM Express on the host side, and setting up the information and providing it to the other end in an NVM Express and NVM subsystem such that the subsystem can write directly to the memory on the host side. It takes no innervation from the host and it optimizes the data passing from each end of the connection. Using the RDMA transport for NVM Express has a number of benefits. NVM Express over RDMA is a great option for optimizing transfer speed and latency. With TCP IP and fiber channel, you can get close to the absolute minimum latency possible, but RDMA is a good fabric's choice for getting to that absolute minimum latency for those very latency sensitive applications, uh, largely because RDMA provides very direct mapping of PCI semantics onto the fabric transport. And the RDMA protocols are optimized for low protocol overhead. RDMA is commonly implemented using hardware offload in the RNIC and has zero copy data transfers along with the low protocol overhead. All these features combined result in the most predictability of your performance and the least variability in the amount of time it takes for the data tr transit across the fabric. If you're trying to look for something that's the absolute closest possible performance to direct attach PCIe drives inside of a server, a small Ethernet fabric with RDMA is your best bet to get that type of performance. In comparison to some of the other transport technologies supported for NVM Express, RDMA, especially RDMA with RDMA over converged Ethernet, is a lighter weight networking stack than the other stacks such as TCP IP. RDMA over converged Ethernet, for example, uses the UDP and IP network layers, but does not use the TCP layer that provides a lot of the services in TCP IP. TCP IP comes with more infrastructure services, such as error management, but that does come at a cost of more latency and more latency variation than you get with RDMA. There are some challenges to using the RDMA transport, a couple in particular. In many environments, using RDMA isn't as difficult as many have been led to believe. RDMA, specifically RCE or, or, or Rocky V2, as it's often called over Ethernet, requires NICs and switches that have special support for RDMA built into them. That does mean that it won't run over many existing network configurations. However, to get the performance of NVMe across a fabric such as Ethernet, it's best to run over high performance networks. 100 gigabit ethernet, which is a good match for many data intensive applications today, is frequently available with built-in Rocky V2 support in the network switches and network interface cards that support ethernet Rocky V2. The second challenge that's often discussed for using the RDMA transport is network routing and congestion management. RDMA, specifically Rocky V2, is challenging to configure across multiple network switch hops. You have to have your settings set correctly across your NICs and your switch throughout the network fabric. In most data center environments, it's recommended that you configure your storage such that your network only has one or two switch hops between the servers and the storage that they're using. Rocky V2 well, works well in that type of an environment. NVMe with RDMA can also be used as a SAS replacement, which is directly attached with no network switches. And in that mode, you don't have any of the configuration problems. 
I've had experience using NVMe over RDMA, specifically Rocky V2, as a SAS replacement for expansion storage behind servers. In a closely connected configuration, RDMA with Rocky V2 has provided the most predictable storage performance with the least host processor load and the least network latency due to the hardware offload and lightweight network protocol that is offered with RDMA. RDMA is virtually always hardware accelerated in the network interface cards, and most 100 gigabit NICs have RDMA offload built into them with all of the transport processing all done in the adapter. In other protocols, such as TCP IP, the offload is not universally done in the adapters, which in our experience has resulted in higher processing load on the host CPU. There are specific markets where NVMe over RDMA, such as Rocky V2, are the best transport for that market. NVMe over RDMA has an opportunity to have a valuable place in composable architectures, such as those using disaggregated storage, where the storage is located outside of the servers. With RDMA, we're able to compose optimal network sizes that mix and match the storage and the compute and achieve the absolute maximum possible performance between that compute and storage. A skilled customer, such as, for example, an HPC customer that's very performance sensitive, would prefer RDMA because that enables them to get the absolute maximum performance and predictability for their storage. And as previously mentioned, NVMe over RDMA is great technology for the merging technology space of disaggregated storage. Uh, with using the RDMA, you can get really close to the direct attached storage performance. So there's less dedicated storage inside of servers where it can get stranded. Instead, we have the storage outside of the server enclosure attached to the servers over a high performance network, such as our 200 or even 400 gigabit ethernet running the RDMA transport. These use cases are particularly useful for composable environments, uh, such as many private clouds, and they could also be useful for hyperscalers or cloud computing environments. Separating the RDMA transport into its own specification will enable development and will make adoption easier. The biggest gain for system and device implementers is that we took the NVMe or fabric specification and integrated it with the NVMe base specification so that everything that is NVMe generic, whether it's PCIe or fabric related, is now in one single document. And then we broke out the transport specific specifications, in this case, the RDMA specification into its own specification. The RDMA specification is a very simple document showing how nicely the NVMe over PCIe transport designs mapped into the NVMe over RDMA specification. To learn more about NVMe technology, you can visit the NVM Express website and the NVM Express YouTube channel to learn more about the NVMe 2.0 specifications and the new transport specifications. <music>